Hello everyone, ito si Dr. Esperanza at nandito kayo ngayon sa classroom ko sa Barstow Community College at ngayon ay tuturuan ko kayo kung paano gumamit or gumawa or bumuo ng frequency distribution table at ng relative cumulative frequency graph also known as an O-Jive para sa inyong mga group data set. At special ang araw na ito dahil makikisipin kayo sa klase ko dito sa California at kung uh, hindi pa kayo nakapag-subscribe sa channel ko, please hit the subscribe button share niyo yung mga lessons ko and for our experiment. So this is basically what we're going to be working on in today's workshop on organizing and ungrouped data. And we're going to start with the frequency distribution table. So a frequency distribu distribution table is one way on how we organize an unorganized number set or data set. And it's basically counting the number of frequency, that's why it's frequency distribution table, on how many times a certain data set appeared in your sample. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And after working on the frequency distribution table, we're going to um, represent those numbers in graph form. And we are going to be working on two graphs today. One is the histogram or the frequency graph. And the other one is an ogive or the relative, frequent, relative cumulative frequency graph. So those are the two graphs that we're going to be generating based on our frequency distribution table. So let's have the first set of data. So on our first case, we're going to be working on um, data sets from an experiment. And on this experiment, a certain researcher wanted to know and want to determine if adolescent males show greatest rate of physical growth in certain ages. So what they did was they collected 35 10-year-old boys and from 10 years up until 18 years, they recorded their height growth. And from their height growth every year, they recorded the maximum or greatest rate of physical growth. So from the 35 10-year-olds that they have in this data set, this is their the ages when they had the greatest height growth. So let's say this person right here who is John at 12 years old, they recorded their, or they, they recorded his height from 10 years old up until 18 years old. And at the age of 12, that's his year when his growth spurt is at the greatest. That's basically what your data set is showing. And you notice that it's ungrouped and it's just a bunch of numbers right now. And in statistics, the beauty of statistics is that we can come up with a mathematical way on how we can make these numbers be a little bit more visually informative for all of us. And that's what we're going to be doing today. And to be able to do that, we're going to organize these numbers, which is right now just a bunch of numbers in the board. But once we rearrange them and organize them, it will make us appreciate the numbers that we're seeing because one, we can do some inferences and come up with reports on our data set based on our experiment. Okay, so here's our data set and we're going to start with the frequency. Now, what do you notice about our data set? What is the lowest age that we have here? 11, 10. Oh, 10. 10. So 10 years old is our um, least or the, the uh, youngest recorded age for um, growth rate. What about the highest? 18, uh, 16. 18. Oh, 18. 18. So if we take the range, do you still remember the range? Yeah. Which is maximum minus minimum, right? Mm -hmm. What is the maximum height? 18. 18 minus 10, which is? 8. Eight. Eight. So the spread or the range of our data set is just 8, which is not that big, which means in our frequency distribution table, we can start at the youngest, which is 10, and then just write their age all the way to 18. Now, obviously, there are several number of boys right here who had uh, their growth 
sperm at 10 years old, 11, 12, and we're going to count them on the second column. So we're going to be counting those students or those boys who had their uh, maximum growth rate at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay? So we're going to be counting. All right. Let's start. So we're going to be just look at the data set and organize them. So how many 10-year-old boys are here in this data set? One. One? Just one? Yes. All right. What about 11? Two. And make sure to be systematic because you cannot miss any of those data set because if you miss one, your frequency distribution table will all be wrong. So make sure that you are being careful with how you tally your frequency. So, we so can this people. Hmm? So now that we have organized those number of frequency in our frequency distribution table, mm -hmm. we have six, we have three, we have one, we have one. So yes, you accurately counted those number of 10-year-olds in this data set, 11-year-olds in this data set, and so on. Now, the importance of our frequency distribution table is that we can use this to come up with our first statistical graph based on our data set. Mm -hmm. This is ungrouped, and now we have a more organized data set. So how are we going to use this in creating our histogram? We need to draw our graph and our scale. So the first thing that you need to do is to draw your xy plane. So here, in our data right here, we started at 10 all the way through 18. So we are going to start on our minimum, which is 10 and then all the way through 18. And since we're using it, using a single data set, so we're just going to count all the way through 18 for our scale. Now, it's important that you label your graph because your graph is useless if no one can understand it. And they can understand it by labeling your graph. So this histogram right here is your maximum yearly growth of 35 boys based on our survey, right? So that is our horizontal axis. Now for our vertical axis, the vertical axis is going to be your frequency. And your frequency, what is the lowest frequency? One. One. And what is the highest? The nine. Nine. So you're just going to count your frequency from 1 all the way through 9. So we have this, oh, I, I miss one. So 7, 8, 9. So all the way through 9. So now that we have our scale, all we need to do is to draw our histogram. And a histogram is similar to a bar graph, but it's actually not a bar graph because a bar graph is different from a histogram. A histogram is most, um, or it tells you the distribution of your data set using bars. So to be able to construct your bar graph or histogram correctly, my technique is to always draw my vertical lines in each of my unit right here. So I'll draw a vertical line right here. I'll draw another vertical line right here. Make sure you use a straight edge. And the reason why I'm drawing vertical lines is this is going to be my guide because it's a lot easier to draw a histogram and it's going to be more accurate if we're using a straight edge. And once you have all these bars, for example, for 10-year-olds, what is the frequency of 10-year-olds in our data set? So one. So that's your first bar graph. And 11 years old? Two. 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 So you're seeing the technique on why I want to draw the <coughs> vertical line first. So since my lines are all crooked, good thing I am using technology because psh, I can draw a straight line right here and I can draw a straight line all the way through 18 so that I'll be able to have a more accurate 
histogram in my data set, but in your notebook or in your paper, make sure to use a straight edge. So let's complete our histogram because now we have a prettier graph. Um, for 10 years old, one. For 11 years old, two. For 12 to 13, we have five. 13, seven. So now we have our histogram. So all you need to do is to shade it. And if we're going to shade it, good thing I have this right here. A bell shape curve. So that is the power of a histogram because it gives you the shape of the distribution and now you can say that your distribution is approximately normal which means 50% of your distribution is evenly distributed in the left and in the right tail. So that's basically why you need to construct your histogram. Now, to make it more informative, let's compute for the relative frequency. And the relative frequency is basically changing all these frequency into percent form. And to do that, all you have to do is to use our calculator and find one, one out of 35. And what is it in percent form? Can you please use your calculator? Digits in your calculator is important. So this one is point zero two eight five. One divided by thirty five. So if we convert this in percent form, it is approximately equal to two point eight percent or about three percent. There. So now we have three percent. Now let's complete the rest of your data set. So we know that this is 3% for one. We also have one right here, so this one is also 3%, and this one is also 3%. We just need to fill in the rest of our data set. Two out of 35. Two divided by 35, it's giving me 0 0.0571. Move it, and it's 5.7, so it's about 6%. What these boxes represent. 3 3%, 3%, 6%, 6%, 14%, 20%. The biggest 26% is the tallest in your box. And then it's starting to go down to 17%, 9%. And then the 3% right here. And that is why creating your frequency distribution table is powerful in statistics because from just a bunch of numbers, now we're seeing a more visual and more informative way on representing our numbers or the collection of numbers we had. So this is why it's extremely important that you are understanding what your numbers are showing you and the percentage in each of these bars in your histogram. Another graphical representation that you could use your relative frequency is a pie chart because it's a hole. So if you draw a big circle and cut it depending on its percentage and you'll be able to create another statistical graph which is a pie chart. Mm -hmm. So a pie chart and a histogram, they are related because a pie, pie chart is just a circular form of your histogram. Okay, so let's move on to our second level of statistical graph, which is an ogive. So in an ogive, we're going to be computing for the cumulative frequency and then the relative cumulative frequency. So we're still, we still have our age data set right here and the frequency, and now we're going to produce the cumulative frequency. And the cumulative frequency is basically the sum of each of your data sets 
from the top going to the bottom. So your first number in your relative cumulative, I mean, cumulative frequency column is your first data set. And then you add it to the second row, which is 2. 1 plus 2 is? 3. And then you do the same thing until you reach 35. So let's complete our table. All right. So now that we have our cumulative frequency, let's compute for the relative cumulative frequency. What do you think is the relative cumulative frequency? How do you compute for that? So you're going to divide 1 over 35. 3 out of 35, 8 out of 35. Oh. Scare me. Let's use our calculator and convert this into percent form. 1 divided by 35 is just going to be the same as the first one, which is about 3%. Yes. What about 3 out of 35? 9%. 9? So that is our cumulative frequency, and now we're going to graph it so we can produce our ogive or percentile graph. So we need our axis, and in our axis, the horizontal axis will still be the same. It's still going to be the uh, age of the boys, and we're still going to start with 10 all the way through 18. And this will still be maximum yearly growth of 35 boys, but in this axis, we're no longer using the frequency, we're using relative cumulative frequency. And the relative cumulative frequency is from 3% up to 100%. So my vertical axis is now divided into percent. 10%, 20%, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, all the way through 100. And again, just like a histogram, it's a lot easier to graph each of these points if we have a guide. So if you have a straight edge, draw a vertical line to each of these axes right here so that when we plot the points, it's a lot easier. So let's have the rest of my number. Let's start with the very end. I always start at the very end, so it's a lot easier. And here we have 100% at 18. So at 18, I have 100%. The last number is at 3%, so somewhere here. Okay, and now we have our ogive, and in our ogive, all we need to do is to connect the dots so we can create some sort of a linear graph. So from here, from zero, it went up here, 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 here. And this is our ogive or the relative frequency graph. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to interpret our data set or to use our ogive in answering some problems involving our data set. So let's answer this. Nice. The first question is, what is the 50 percentile of boys who reached a maximum yearly growth rate. So what is the 50th percentile of boys who reach a maximum yearly growth rate? At salamat sa panonood nyo ng aking math video at kung nagustuhan nyo yung lesson na tinuro ko sa inyo ngayon, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and support my second channel na nandito sa description box below. So again, salamat at kita-kita ulit tayo sa susunod yung lecture dito sa Marshtown. Didn't score above 90 points on this statistics test. So 90 points is somewhere here. Above it.